No church like Redeem. No church like Winners. No church like Mountain of Fire. No church like uh, Chosen. No church like uh, Christ Embassy. No church like Deeper Life in the world. Redeem alone has over 40,000 parishes. Winner alone has 30,000. There are only 10,000 wards in Nigeria where decisions of those who rule these countries are made. So, it's not just deliver Nigeria, deliver Nigeria. It should be God. Wake up your church. Talk to your general overseers. The church community is an imprisoned community. Our general overseers have imprisoned us. Well, that was deep, very deep. Very, very deep. But before you go and start to write and start to get angry, just hold on. Right? So I was um, searching for something and then I, I fell on uh, top nine praying churches in the world. And of course, uh, and then the bottom nine, that's the least nine praying churches in the world. I thought to do a comparison of the top nine and the bottom nine. And then the revelations are very astounding. And that's why I don't want it to be religious. Or don't, don't, don't be extreme. Don't think too much. We're going to get to um, a place where so you'll be shocked to see where we are getting to. First and foremost, of the top nine praying churches, and this statistics was done by according to how they pray. I'm not talking about Christians alone, but talking about Christianity, uh, Hinduism, Buddhism, uh, Islam, traditional worship, and all forms of worship, all forms of worship. As long as you 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 have you believe in a deity, you believe in a supernatural being that is being prayed to. So don't take this too serious. It's just for us to be able to. This is for quite um, logical and um, and mental purposes. So number nine on the top nine praying churches in the world is Indonesia, and the statistics is showing that Indonesia has an 84 percent praying population then there is niger or what we call niger in africa 87 percent there is iraq 87 percent iraq is in the middle east there is iran yeah, someone said the twin brother of iraq anyway you see iraq you will see iran same 87 percent you see why they're able to it there is the djibouti i think djibouti is in africa it is 87 percent there is senegal senegal is in west africa it is 88 percent there is algeria algeria is in north africa algeria is 88 percent and there is nigeria which sit comfortably at number two which is 95 percent and of course there is afghanistan which is 96 percent of these top nine churches called which of them is in the second or first world country? No, I think the most um, developed of these countries, um, to an extent, would be Indonesia, based on certain level of um, um, exports um, um, and uh, FDI being done, a couple of um, pro goods and services, goods particularly being processed and exported from Indonesia. But it's with the potential that Indonesia has, just like every other country. Of course, you should know how, how well. You should know you know what Afghanistan represents. You know what Algeria is. You know what Senegal. You know what Djibouti. You know what Iran, Iraq. Niger, of course, uh, currently is is because and this is not because they pray, but like we said, we are going to get to somewhere. Then in the bottom nine, that's the least nine praying nations of the world. Number nine is Denmark, and it is reported that only ten percent of the population pray or depend on some form of um, um, situation, son of deity or personality or supernatural being. France, 10%. Estonia, 9%. Germany, 9%. Um, Czechoslovakia or Czech Republic is 9%. Austria is 8%. Switzerland is 8%. The United Kingdom is second and is 6%. Then China, is one percent now break it down obviously if you do this comparison you realize that all the countries on the bottom line bottom line they are in the developed world um, even if some of them have not achieved full status of being in the first world countries but none of them is in the third world the least that they can be will be in the second world while you notice that in the top nine 
uh, you see that they are in the okay because of because of um, micro and macroeconomics understanding you see developing but most of them are actually not developing most of them are retrogressing so to speak or if you use the index indices an index of what developing should mean these guys most of these countries are not making progress they're actually retarding and a lot of things but all that is not for this conversation now what this means is that there is a fundamental problem the reason why most of these countries pray pray is because their country cannot provide the necessary services their countries or their government cannot provide the necessary facilities so they have had to put their hope and trust in a supernatural being or in an ideology that can help them to have hope that it will be a better tomorrow. And the reason why the bottom line countries are the least praying nations is because their government or their systems have been fixated to ensuring that the people get dividends of the services that they are supposed to get. They are, the government and the leadership and the systems are accountable and responsible to the people. So somehow, they can trust their people more than a supernatural being that they have been told by either ancestors or books or myth or whatever. So you will not blame the people in Nigeria who pray because they pray because that is the only way they can sustain some level of hope so they don't get depressed and suicidal. If people see have hope, if if what the Nigerian church is said, so to speak, is hope, that is a terrible thing. Because we have got a government that is irresponsible and uncountable. Where we have a problem is when these pastors or these general overseers or these institutions, which they are, of course, whether collectively or individually, cannot now create a common voice to ensure that they remind the government of the day that they have gotten a responsibility to the people, that that's a problem. It also means that they are benefiting from the seemingly retardation and stagnation of the people. And that's the, that's the dynamics. While you are building hope in them, so you don't get frustrated, it's also fine. But ensure that you also speak. It's just like a security team that is trying to mediate in a quarrel, in a crisis. While you are talking to the aggrieved, right? Ensure that you go to this, the oppressors of or, 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 or whoever, or whatever they are, and also let them know that certain level of sometimes you can ask for apologies and tell them don't do this. Or oh, these guys are angry. This is what they said. If you cannot go and tell the other side that this is what these guys are saying, they will lose hope and forget about your uh, mediation, and then they will go all out. So my query or my quarrel with the Nigerian church institution, or that's a just church, Nigerian religious institution faith-based whatever it is islam christianity hinduism buddhist traditional worship whatever and all that if as you continue to tell people to have hope that because of your belief in god it's going to get better ensure that you use your platform whether collectively or individually to look at ways of strengthening the systems and institutions of governance because that's the primary assignment of them and as i hear pastor says it is not my job to do this and do that you were, i was not elected Yes, you are the one preaching hope, but you have got a responsibility to tell the people, to tell the people who is on the other side, the government or the government, because some of them are also loyal to you, they respect you, they are your friends, to remind them. So this is where the problem is. So until we have a government that has become responsible and accountable to the people, the people will keep, keep praying, because that is the last resort that they believe in. I don't know what you think about this. I want to hear from you what you think. And let's have this conversation. If you dis if you disagree with me, not a problem. If you agree, then we can have a further conversation. I'll catch you some other time. Bye for now.